Welcome to the Pretty Powerful Podcast, where powerful women are interviewed every week to share real inspiring stories and incredible insight to help women or anyone break the barriers, be a part of innovation, shatter the glass ceiling, and dominate to the top of their sport, industry, or life's mission. Join us as we celebrate exceptional women and step into our power. And now, here's your host, Angela Gennari. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Angela Gennari, and I am sitting here with Tracy Sofra. How are you today? I'm really good, and I'm really excited to be on your show. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next half hour or so. Awesome. Me too. Me too. So I wanted to introduce Tracy because she is super, uh, she has a super great um, background and something that I think is going to really inspire a lot of women. So Tracy Safra is Australia's leading financial advisor specializing in women's financial confidence. With over 30 years experience as a business leader, wealth mentor, award-winning financial advisor, author of Finding Financial Freedom, and keynote speaker, Tracy has shared her proven method for shifting mindsets and the limits to financial success for thousands of women across Australia. Tracy is dedicated to investing in women's empowerment. As the founder and CEO of WOW Women, Tracy leads a community of like-minded business, professional, and entrepreneurial women working collectively to create change in their own financial life and the lives of other women across the globe as part of a greater social impact across the UN sustainability goals. So that is super incredibly impressive. I am so excited that you mentioned the word empowerment because I think we don't see enough of that in in female circles. So congratulations on that incredible success. Thank you. Uh, it's all about the empowerment piece for me. I was asked that question quite a while ago about, you know, what came first? What is it? And, you know, um, obviously my toolbox is my yeah. background is accounting, financial planning. But, but you know, we all know everyone's um, after the the why, right? We ever, ever since we watched Simon Siddick and fell in love with him. Um, I remember watching that for the first time and, and I literally went, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, yeah. And so yeah. I was deep in thought. But um, bringing that back to what I do, why do I do it? It's about empowerment. It's yeah. about it's about empowering women to be able to make their own decisions, to be able to um, lead their own lives. It, it's about them getting into the driver's seat and not being led or being passengers or, you know, in every way, shape or form, Um my skill set is the the financial piece, but you know I'm a woman too. I'm a mum, so I have a lot of life experience because I'm a bit older now. So <laughs> I've yeah. got pearls of wisdom that I bring in there into my <laughs> advice, as you do, because that's how it works. Absolutely. So you know, I, I I have this conversation so often, and I know I probably get a lot of. Um, I'm probably judged harshly for this, but I am a big proponent of women maintaining financial independence. Um, and, and I cannot stress that enough because I have run across more women than I can count in my life who have felt the need to stay stuck in a marriage that isn't working or stuck in an abusive relationship or stuck in a situation that is just toxic and not able to go out on their own. So I am just dying to hear your thoughts on that because I think for women, um, we really need to have our own financial independence in order to feel like we are not a slave to our lives, that we are the 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 advocate for our lives and not the victim of our lives. Yeah, 100%. And um, I could talk to the cows come home about all of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, simply because, let me just take it this, let me just share this bit with you. I see the fallout of not having your own, being in control of your own financial life. I see the fallout when women come to me yeah. and are literally distressed. So their husband's either passed away and they're, they're older, it depends on what, what age their husband's passed away, um, or they've divorced or um, uh, single women coming out of relationships. I see the fallout of those decisions of not being in control of your money, of not making your own financial decisions. And let me just kind of frame that up too, because as women, 
um, and the stats have pro probably changed. But as women, we're most comfortable in the domain of the home. Right. So we make those shopping, budgeting, school fees, mortgage, you know, we love that. We're mm -hmm. like our confidence level is above the 80% in that area. That's where we're most comfortable. Um, and I think it's only an opinion that because we're comfortable doing that because there's no um, great responsibility, it, it, you know, what could possibly go wrong, right? right. Buying the groceries, managing the budget because we're um, very um, – uh, we're very resourceful in in that sense. We we have that mm -hmm. innate ability to do that. I am generalising, but most of us innately um, resourceful in being able to do that. And there's not a huge responsibility in those decisions because the mortgage is the mortgage. You know, they they right. they're kind of taken care of. But the minute we're asked to, hey, Angela, um, what about buying an investment property or or how's your in Australia we call it superannuation? It's your four hundred one. Is is it is that right? Yeah, four hundred one k. Yeah, um, we call it superannuation in Australia. How's your four hundred one k going? Do you know how it's invested? Uh, right. Are you contributing to it? What are you doing there? What about a share portfolio? What about some managed funds or you call it mutual funds? And all of a sudden it goes, um. Oh yeah, not sure about that. Mm, you know, yeah. and and the confidence level drops dramatically, and so that that there not not being comfortable and confident with that impacts mm -hmm. the rest of our lives. And then handing over our financial a lot of the time, also when women first get into relationships or get married, they kind of hand over that to their husbands or their partners, and that's just. You know, that's, that's, dare I say, financial suicide. What are you yeah. doing? Yes. You, know, you can't do that. Um, and it's not about love and commitment and trust and all that. I get all that. I, I've been married for 21 years nearly now. I've been with my husband for 30. We were together 10 years prior to that. Um, don't confuse the two. Mm -mm. Stop, stop messing the two up. It's getting too messy because if he leaves you or you leave him or he dies, well, what, what then? Like, and let me tell you, it's not, um, you know, you're not, we're not Cinderella. We're not going to go off into the sunset on the back of the horse. And I mean, we were brought up with all of that. And whilst I, you know, I am you know, very uh, romantic and internal optimist. There is a reality to life. So I see the fallout when they're distressed and they yeah. come to me and they are, just beside themselves yeah and that doesn't have to be like that and it's really not that complicated but we've got so many layers of stuff I'll call it that we can't get past as women you know there's there's cultural there's um the traditions mm. um, society uh, there's re religion there's so many layers of stuff I'll call it um that hinders us from overcoming that that final barrier because if you have financial independence you can make all those decisions and you're confident in yourself to do that and you you don't have to be the 1950s wife where you stay home because you've got no other options right exactly well and and then you know my my whole you know viewpoint on this and this comes from experience for me is that um you know i I gave up that control of watching finances. I didn't give up working and I didn't give up earning money, but I had gone into a business with my husband who, um, you know, we were married for a few years, everything was going well. And, and I just trusted him to make the financial decisions. And so, you know, we kind of divided up those, you know, responsibilities in the household and his was finances. And so he managed mostly most of the finances for the business. Now I wholeheartedly trusted him. I had no reason to not trust him. However, he had gotten some really bad advice from an accountant that we were working with. And the accountant said, you know, if you and your wife own this business together, you should put you, you know, because we had an LLC and so it goes into your personal finances anyway. And so, you know, for our household, and even though I was 51% owner of the business, for some reason, it just, the way it was structured looked like I made no money. And, and it had gone like that for a few years. And I did not realize that until we went to go get a mortgage for a new house. We were buying a new house and the mortgage company came back and said, you know, 
your credit is fine, but we need to just put the house in my husband's name and not my name. And I said, well, why is that? And they said, well, because you don't have an income. And I said, the hell I don't. <laughs> I own 51% of this company. I'm the driving force for sales. I'm at least 90% of the revenue that comes in is directly attributed to me. How am I not on the mortgage because I don't make an income? And they said, because well, you're not on the books. Credit. Yeah, they said you're not on the books. And so that was a huge wake up call. And and quite honestly, was it ended up being a a kind of going off a cliff because it was it was the beginning of what I realized, okay, I can't I can't trust somebody else to have my financial best interest in mind. I have to have my financial interest in mind. And, and that was a big wake up call for me, you know, of like, no more, no more am I going to step aside and trust that something is being done with my best interest in mind. Because again, you could wholeheartedly love your husband and trust him. But if he gets bad financial advice from an accountant who, who is just looking at the numbers, they're not looking at, you know, what happens if my husband dies? What happens if we divorce, which is what happened? You know, we ended up getting a divorce. I'm not on the mortgage and now I'm quit claiming a deed to him, you know, because I, you know, I had to build up my credit again. And so these are the things that women don't think about when they think, oh, it's just as easy to let him handle it. It's, it's not, it really is not. You, you really need to be an act you know, have active engagement in all financial decisions. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, when you're saying all of that, I, I'm I'm thinking with um, my background in accounting, and I can't yeah. speak about accountants because I'm an accountant first, and right. I can speak about financial planners. And accountants in Australia cannot give financial planning advice. That's the law uh -huh. in this country, and I wholeheartedly agree with that because as an accountant for 32 years. Accountants are very um, narrow. I'm generalising. There are exceptions sure. to the rules, but simply they're just looking at the numbers, like you said. And if they're in, if they're a tax accountant where they're lodging your tax returns and trying to minimise tax, they're not thinking 3D. They're not going, hang on a minute, if I reduce, if I cut that back so hard... Yeah, great. We save tax, but when these people go for a mortgage, what's the what's the bank going to say? The bank's going to go, "You look like shit." Excuse the French on yeah. the paper. I'm not giving you this loan, so yeah. you've got to pay a bit of tax. You've got to do a bit of everything. Um, yes. But unfortunately, yes, accountants do give bad advice. So financial advisors, though, um, you've just got to get really good advice on, on, just on that. I had a client who divorced with her husband, and listen to this. This is nuts. Um, she had no reason to give, and, and she ended up with five or six properties that were well off. Mm -hmm. She gave her new accountant a power of attorney. Wow. Now, now why would you do that <laughs> when you're not incapacitated and there's nothing wrong with you? Guess wow. what? He had a gambling problem, didn't he? He oh. sold all the properties and she lost everything. Now, that's the extreme of handing over your financial life when you don't even have to to an accountant. Why can't you manage that yourself? Well, maybe you're not confident, but what you're saying and, and the other side of when I'm listening to you is you you I call it you've got to sit at the table. Yeah. You can't just go, look, you've got that and I've got this. And yeah, we do that in relationships. I get that. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, um, the traditional roles were dad um, mowed the lawns, yeah. took out the rubbish and washed the cars, right? Yeah. That sort of thing, right? And mum did the inside. I get that. I get that. I'm from that generation too. But we, you and I are here to shout out loud to say, women, you must be at the table at least. Yes. If you're not comfortable... But don't just put the blinkers on and go, oh, yeah, he's got it because I really hate the numbers. Well, I'm sorry. You're going to have to kind of like the numbers. because <laughs> yeah. the, You're going to look, that's just a hard pill to swallow. And I, I might get slammed for saying this. But at the end of the day, the risks are too high if you don't just sit at the table and go, right, what's actually going on here? Because you are intelligent enough. You don't have to be good at maths. That's yeah. such a fallacy. Oh, I'm not good at maths. Well, who gives a shit? There's a thing called um, a calculator. Yeah. Um, anyway, but be like this these days, tech takes care of all of that. It's just about understanding the concepts. And women are great investors. They oh, actually yeah. are better investors because mm -hmm. they don't go off on ego and chasing the last return. They're kind of like, 
okay, tell me what that's about, Trace. Give me the information. They research, they listen, they evaluate, and they go, hmm, I think I might do this. And nine times out of 10, it's a better way to invest than just yeah. going around bloody, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're analytical, you know, so we're we're going to we're going to look at something and really weigh all sides of it. And I think that what that makes us very cautious, but good investors, you know, we're not yep. we're not going to pull the trigger really quickly on something. We're going to think it through. And and I think what women as women, what we do really, really well is we look at all sides of a situation, you know, because we're used to right when we have to take care of a family. We don't just look at what's best for my husband. We're looking at what's best for my kids, what's best for my parents, what's best for our family, what's best for our future. And so we don't make decisions based on what's only best for me. That's just not in our nature for the most part, you know, and so I think as women, we do look at all sides and that makes us good, you know, good investors for the, for the most part. I love that. I, I love, I love that, uh, how you tied that in with what we do every day. I'd never thought of it like that. I love that. Mm -hmm. It's so true. We yeah. do. We don't, we don't just, you know, say one person, we just look at, look after the clan, so to yes. speak, don't we? Yeah, um, we sure do. We sure yeah, do. We do. We do. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell me, um, you know, what, what kind of, what's your money story? So you, you have a money story. So tell me about that. Yeah, it's ugly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's extraordinary because sometimes I just say our oh, life is cruel. Look where I ended up it, in a nutshell. Um, so I was raised in a family that lived from paycheck to paycheck. Uh -huh. um, I was never taught to save um, anything we needed. We bought, um, we weren't the, you know, have the cash and buy family. We were go and get the loan and pay it off family. Yeah. And um, we never, we never, um, there was a lot of integrity around, you know, making sure you're meeting your commitments, not over committing where you can't pay, always paid it. But sure. whatever came in went out. That was it. There was none of this saving investing philosophy. That's my background. That's where I come from. Um, and so I then in my early adult life just took that because money's a skill not taught. I took sure. that and implemented it in my life because I don't know any different, do I? Nobody taught me. And I didn't come into contact with anyone else that would change that mm. until, until, um, until I met my husband now and started my career as an accountant financial planner. Financial planning came after, but I started my, my career relatively late compared to others. I had a bit of fun in my late teens and sort of came, <laughs> sort of came good at 25. Okay. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so prior to that, yeah, my story is not a perfect story. I'm not the I'm not the one that went straight from high school to uni, did everything perfectly. I was the total opposite. Um, and so when I um, went into accounting, met my husband, and around that time, early on in that time, I had a a major credit card fallout. So what mm -hmm. happened was, and I was living on my credit card. I love my credit card, um, and. One month back in those days, we had paper. Uh, we uh -huh. didn't have the. It was it was back in those days. There was no internet. There was no mobile phones. And I got my latest statement, and I had gone over the limit. And I'm having this out of body experience, as you do, for that split second of, hey, because the month before it was fine, and then in a month's time it was like, Pfft. yeah. And I thought, and my heart started racing and I, you know, where you're just kind of getting really nervous about the situation because it's the last thing you want. And um, and I'm thinking, well, what could have happened here? And within seconds, of course, I'd rationalized it. I'd been hacked, right? Someone had hacked me. That's that right. was the obvious. I mean, it couldn't be me. <laughs> right. I was hacked. I had to get to the bank. I had to get to the bank and I had to sort it out. So with that, you know, grab that in the car. I don't know how I got there. And back in those days, you had to line up, you know, next yeah. please and all this sort of stuff because you couldn't look at it on your on your mobile app. And and with that, I just ran to the counter and grabbed on and a uh, verbal vomit. And the woman said, Tracy, it's okay. Just let's have a look at what's happened here. And she turned around, looked at her screen. And as she read out, each transaction. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, I hadn't been hacked and it was me, <laughs> as you can imagine. Anyway, with my tail between my legs, total embarrassment, um, I walked out and I was on the, um, just outside the bank on the side there and I literally stopped and thought, oh my 
God, with a few cursing words in there and thought, what am I going to do now? And Mm. I just, that was the lowest of the lowest that I could have got. And I just Mm. thought, how did I get here? Yeah. What the hell's going on? And I vowed at that point that I would never, ever put myself in that situation again. So then I walked across to my other bank because that was with one bank, that credit card, to my main bank. And I went in there and I said, I need a personal loan Mm. and need to pay this off. So I cut it up, got a personal loan, paid it out in 12 months. Now, I still have a credit card. Yeah. But uh, the limit is much lower and I know how to manage it. I know how to do it. But... That's my money story. No one had taught me any of that until I came into the profession and, and my husband's had a huge impact on on who I am and what I do now because he comes from a totally different background yeah. where he understands money. And so now I live by the rule of pay yourself first. Yes. 100%. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You know, and that's, that's such a hard thing to do. I mean, you're, you're a small business owner like I am. So, you know, when I was starting my business, it was really tough. I mean, because this is my third business that I started. And so, you know, as most entrepreneurs, you, you are bootstrapping, right? Because most people, let's be realistic, do not get investors and do not get bank loans because banks are, you know, they, they don't like the risk of an entrepreneur. And so you really have to prove yourself. And so most, most small businesses are bootstrapped. You know, you're, you're having to put your own money into it over and over and over again until you finally start seeing a few pennies come back. (laughs) And so for the first few years of my business, I was only paying myself enough to pay my mortgage and the minimum payment on my credit cards. And I was living off of my credit cards. And it's brutal. I mean, credit card interest rates are yeah. so high. I mean, sometimes, you know, 17, 18, 20, 25 percent. I mean, you got to think about how much, you know, if you have a thousand dollar credit, you know, credit card limit, the amount of interest that you would pay if it took you five years to pay that off is astronomical so yeah it's it and so you know it took a while but finally I, I dug myself out of that but it is tough so how do you how what advice do you give to people when they're trying to dig themselves out of a debt hole yeah the debt hole is really hard um, oh. it is really hard a, a couple of things you can do depending on what your situation is is consolidating little bits of debt. So if you've got store cards and credit cards, if it's that type of debt in Australia, we do have um, some banks that will offer you interest-free period. I don't know if you have it there, say for six months or 12 months. So that may be a way of consolidating that debt, popping it into the one. And you might say, why? Because having one bigger payment. So if you've got, say, five of those and you're making five different payments, if you accumulated that those five payments into one that's going to have a greater impact and reducing that debt if you consolidate it than still trying to attack each one individually Mm -hmm. also from a mindset point of view it's clarity it's nice and clear it's clean clean out the trash like get really clear on stuff um we don't have time time is the the most important um um uh, resource these days and so because we're time deprived, if, if you can't think of your financial situation, I would say this to my clients, particularly with their banking, if you've got 10 bank accounts, you can't possibly know what's going on there. You've got to keep it simple and yes. you've got to really um, dumb it down to a simple place where, you know, your income, whatever it may be, business um you know, wages comes into one account, then you must siphon things across. I generally say, have a bills account, have a a me spending account and have my future self, pay yourself first account that goes into another bank account ready for investment, whatever that may be. And you're going to need advice in that area because it's not a one size fits all, but get it out of the main account. Because if you leave everything in the one account, I guarantee you, you will never get your turn. There will never be enough money in there for you because there will always be something else sucking the life out of it. Oh, yeah. it's the car, it's the kids, it's the da da da. Mm-hmm. You've just got to do it at source. And you know what magically happens? You get used to what's left over. You might think, I don't have enough to do that. Start with $10 a week. Huh. Start with $20 a week. Start with something. Yeah. Get the habit going. And you might say, oh, what impact is that going to have, Trace? 
trust me, just start something. Just yeah. start it. And um, But the debt cycle, like if it's that sort of debt, try and consolidate it and hit it really hard because interest will kill you. Just yeah. like just like compound interest that accumulates and is so powerful, it can work in reverse with debt as well. Yes, absolutely. So when you have when you have someone who's, you know, coming out of college and they're trying to learn about money, um, and this was, you know, I was like you. I I had a mother, single mom, lived paycheck to paycheck. We never really had anything left over. And I remember when I was younger, she would do this thing called a uh it was like a Christmas savings account and a Christmas club or something. So she would go to the so yeah. what would happen is the bank would take automatically ten dollars or something out of every paycheck and that would go into her Christmas Perfect. club account. And that was great. Except she did that for Christmas and that was wonderful, but it never worked the same way for savings and for other things, you know. And so um what advice would you give somebody coming out of college who's trying to figure out money and they don't want, you know, they they want to start out right? Would you say pay yourself first, don't accumulate debt? Like what, what would be your, your top three suggestions to somebody? So when you come out of college, I'm assuming you're working, you've got work yep. and you've, you've started your adult life and now you're yes. in the workforce and you've got your income. The very first place to start is having a look at, I hate the word budget because it feels like, oh, regressive. Feels like work. So, <laughs> yeah, so I've renamed it. It's called cash flow analysis. Okay. Basically, you've got to look at what's coming in and what's going out. So what's coming in is your new wage. What are your cost of living, roughly? Just And don't get bogged down in it because you won't do it because it's no mm -hmm. fun, right? Nobody really likes doing it. But there's apps these days that really are amazing and will help you. You've got to get a rough idea of what that is. And mm -hmm. best guesstimates are okay to start with because if you don't do that, you'll never do it. Yes. So, And while you're in the momentum of things, you just got to keep going because that's how things work. If you put it to the side, Five years will go by and you'll think, oh, my God, I could have done this five years ago. Oh, yeah. Once you've sort of worked that out, hopefully you're not living. If you work that out and you're living beyond your means, then you know you're in trouble straight away. Right? Right. That means you're living yeah. on debt. If your outgoings are more than your in incoming, you must be living on debt somewhere. So that that's an alarm bell straight away. But I'm guessing straight out of uni you know, or college, you're not going to be at that point. Start with something. I recommend the three bank accounts, your your, um, I'm speaking in Australian terms, I suppose, but your your payroll officer or whoever that may be, get them to put a certain amount every week or fortnight, however you get paid, into a bills account that covers your ongoing living, gas, electricity, registration, da 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 da, all of those things. Get a guesstimate, do something because yes. you're going to fine tune it anyway into one account that's just there sitting there for those bills. So when a bill comes, you don't have to go, oh my God, I don't have the 300. What am I going to do? Da, 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 da. You've got to manage that. That's you know mm -hmm. money management. The other account is your guilt-free spending, your 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 allowance, I guess. Like, yeah. you know, want to have a coffee, da, 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 whatever that may be. And the other account is, as I say, that's your future self. That's pay yourself first. Start with something because a magical thing happens. You will learn to live off what's left. You will adjust to that new amount. So if your income is, I don't know, what's the average wage in America? Uh, I don't know, probably 50, 60,000, I would imagine. So for 60,000, try and put away I don't know what it is, 50 bucks a week, 100 bucks a week, whatever that is. If it gets tight, you can just adjust the numbers. Yeah. You're going to have to fine tune that anyway. You're not going to get it perfectly right the first time, but you've got to do something. Yeah. So you've got to get in the driver's seat and you've got to go, right, I get this much every single week. I'm going to do, mm, let me start with 20 to my future self. Let me just see if I can live off 100 myself. I don't know, whatever the figures are. And my ongoing bills are here so that when they come due, I'm not stressed. Everything's covered. I know my future self's taken care of. I've got enough to live and enjoy my life now. And I've got my bills, so I don't have to worry about finding that. And it's sweet. And if it's not quite right, you just got to tweak it until you get that right. And the funniest thing happens, you will adjust to that new amount you're living off and that amount that you've siphoned away for your future self, you won't want to touch that. Mm -hmm. You'll start getting real possessive about, oh, because I often say to clients, 
what's the worst thing that could happen? You end up with a thousand bucks over here or a few thousand. It's still your yeah. money. It's still your bank account. It's not right. like you're losing it, right? Of you course. can grab it if you get stuck. Yeah. But guess Absolutely. what? You're not going to want to do that. You're going to yeah. go, oh my God, I did that. Oh, it's a two grand or whatever it may be because it was quite big for me at that stage to be able to do that, right? Someone that was sure. taught. It's huge for me going, oh my God, look what I've, look what I, I can do this. It's, it's empowering. That's the word. It, yes. You feel stronger. Yes. Because you I know agree. you can do it. Mm -hmm. But there's no exact rule. There's no perfect model. There's start something, basic rules of thumb, keep tweaking it and stay on top of it. And be careful that you don't have this, um, the more we earn, the more we spend. Oh, yeah. Be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. If you get a pay rise, you've got to increase that as well. Yeah. Yourself as well. You can't just eat it all. You can't just spend it all. Mm -hmm. God knows I was really good at that. Oh, <laughs> I, know, I know better than anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. Been well, there, done that. So I know. Yeah. I think we all have, you know, I think we've all yeah. kind of, but it's a good learning experience. And, you know, like with me, I think one of the things I've really wanted my son to learn how to manage money as a as a child. And what I always tell him, and I tell him this and and anything in life, make all the mistakes now, because you can make mistakes now, yep. but the, the older you get, the more costly those mistakes become, you know, going bankrupt at 50 feels different than going bankrupt at 20, right? Because when you lose everything at that stage, rebuilding hurts, you know, it hurts a lot. You can rebuild at 20 without a whole lot of, uh, you know, effect, but, you know, and so I always say, make the mistakes, whether it comes to business or love or finance or whatever, do it all wrong, do it all wrong, because that's the best way to learn is that pain that you feel when, when you lose something that hurts and you remember yes. that pain. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yep. So, sure does. And you've got time at that age. Yes. See, yes. You've got time. Time is your friend. The older you get, the more painful those mistakes become and the more devastating they become. And so, you yes, know, if, you, if you're so. in, you know, let's just say you're in a marriage and, you know, you've, you've figured out that you've lost everything. Like you were just, you, like you were saying earlier with one of your clients, like it hurts. It's painful because rebuilding when you thought you had retirement, when you thought you had, you know, savings, when you thought you had investment properties and then losing that all at that age is, is tough. And so maintaining some sort of financial independence really, because it's a game changer. It's a game changer for women. And I can't preach this enough. And I, I, I get up on my high horse and I talk about this all the time because I'm like, please, please, please don't depend on somebody to make you know if you have to ask somebody for an allowance to live in any kind of way it's not okay mm -hmm. right so I, no. I don't be dependent on I cringe else. when you say that I'm oh. cringing here thinking as a grown woman asking someone for money are you kidding me right now no I don't think so <laughs> no way, no way. And, you know, I can't tell this enough to people, you know, and I, and I see women who, you know, they put all their eggs in their husband's basket and, you know, more power to them if they have a wonderful relationship and there's trust there and, and all that is great. But what if, you know, what if, and you don't want to ever, can think I like also, that. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think I uh, just on that and, and okay. Trusting all good. And I get all of that. Do you think there's a bit of a power shift? Because money is power, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Right? Yeah. So if you don't have any power over the money in the household, how does that play out in the relationship? How, how, what's the, what's, what does that look like? And do mm. you want, do you want to be there or is it just me and in my head that you need to have some form of um, leverage? autonomy in yourself yes. as a person in that relationship I, I don't quite know I love the word female sovereignty it's about being sovereign and being yeah you know um, con in control of your own um, decisions and yeah I guess it depends on the relationship but you know do you sure. have to go do those women have to ask before they make a major purchase um you know I've been married for 21 years and we run two businesses together I've we don't have joint bank accounts 
Yeah. I, I, nev- I never have. I never found a need to. Right. Um, I manage my wage and my credit card and whatever I buy and whatever I do, and he does himself. Um, we look after the, you know, I do the groceries and he pays for the bills, but the profits from the business come into the one place and we make co-decisions about that profit into investments in our personal wealth. So um, I couldn't think of anything worse than having a joint bank account with my husband personally, because it's like, how do I control that then? How do right. I control that money? And and uh, I don't want him seeing every time I buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> None of your damn business what I did with that. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, oh, then you shoes. And, you know, he always says to me, Oh, you always say to me, Trace, you've already had those for a while. <laughs> the standard line. But anyway, look, men don't get shoes. I get that. There's 365 days in a year. You could wear yeah. a different pair of shoes every day, couldn't you? Of course. <laughs> anyway. So I want to know, um, you know, as a small business owner, as, you know, as somebody who's been building a business and you've built a really exceptional business, I mean, just as, as a great influencer of women, what obstacles have you had to overcome in, in your journey? In business? Yeah, yeah. Um, what I've loved about being in business is that I have not had um, a lot of the um, obstacles that women in corporate yeah because oh I control gosh. yeah so I've never been in corporate so I don't understand the glass ceiling yeah. I haven't been sexually harassed I haven't been um, not promoted and all of those sorts of things so I I don't feel I'm in a position to be able to speak about that but I feel for those women and and more empowerment to them to be able to overcome those things. I found it liberating to be in my own business because I call the shots. I decide what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. And um, and no one sort of held me back. I guess the biggest obstacles I found is um, my own mindset. Yeah. If I've held, I think held, held myself back. The biggest obstacles to me um yeah, prob- probably that. Um, and and also the changing landscape all the time that happens in business and particularly um, now that we're more digital mm. um, and, and there's, I don't, I don't know whether I'd call that an obs- obstacle. It's more of a recalibration of um, understanding what's out there and really, I guess, getting the point across not sure I'm answering this question properly, but getting the point across about credibility and who to take advice from. For mm. I'm really passionate about honesty, integrity, education and doing the right thing. Absolutely. Anyone that I work with, that has to always that's at the forefront all the time. So whoever I come into contact with has to it has to go to a better place. Um, and that's at the heart of everything I do. And I have seen over the years, so many people getting really bad advice from people that they shouldn't listen to yeah. and, and they should investigate. If you're going to work with someone, you've got to know who they are yeah, um, and yeah. what their credibility is, what their credentials. And I always say to my clients and people that want to work with me, you should be asking me what I've done in my financial life. Yeah. You should be. Why shouldn't you? Because it's so easy to sit back and give free advice. Not it's not that it's free, but advice yeah, yeah. to people. But but I always say to clients, I would never recommend something to you that I wouldn't do myself. So mm. if I'm not prepared to invest in that. I would never say to my clients, go and invest in that. I just wouldn't do it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so, I, I agree. I agree. Well, and, and I look, you know, people do judge financial planners because if your financial planner doesn't have, isn't, isn't, you know, well off themselves, you know, able to make their own smart investments, why would you trust them with your money? <laughs> you know, it, You've it, really got to look at who they are and what they've done in their own yeah. lives. And, and I know that not everyone is probably that way inclined. They could just be a sure. professional in that field, but I think it's really important to say, look, you're, you're telling me this, this and this, but, you know, what have you done in your financial life? Um, and it's it's great to be able to share. And I always say to my clients, I bring me to the table. Yeah, experience, expertise, you know, you've got a formal education, all of that. Yes, yeah. obviously. Um, 
but I always share the highs and the lows and some of the stuff we did that was you know, shouldn't have invested in that and say, look, this is what happened. Watch out for that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got the scars to prove that one. But these uh-huh. work really well. These philosophies are great. This is what we do. But in your situation, this is what I would do, you know. Yeah. 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 It's okay. just about bringing the honesty and integrity in yourself to the table. That's, yeah. that's what I think is really, really powerful. Okay. All right. That's a great answer. Um, so who inspires you? Oh, good question. Who inspires me? The women I work with. Yeah. The women that I can help inspire me. You know, I often ask myself, there are times when, as you know, as an entrepreneur, there are tough days. Yes. And um, whilst I'm in my bricks and mortar business, I also have an online presence and I'm wanting to transition across more to the online space in my business through education and training through WOW. So WOW Women has money, WOW Money. And then we have the WOW Collective, which is then the the um, the supportive um, membership group. And then uh, there's a WOW Executive, which is where I'm wanting to work with other businesses so they come on board with me so we can change the landscape together rather than me just by myself. I think there's power, um, um you know, um, power in numbers. Yes. Um, but as, as I said, as you know, as an entrepreneur, there are tough days where you think, why am I doing this? Yes. And you know what? I just can't stop myself. Mm. I, if I wake up three o'clock in the morning and I've got an idea, I think, oh, that would be amazing if I could do that for them. Let me just write that down. Like I, yeah. d- I can't stop myself. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just inspired by all the women that I have helped and who I can help and say to them, it's not that hard. You've got this. I'm, I can I can help you. I can help you. I can teach you. Let me just tell you the basics. And it's just going to open your mind. You're going to go, oh, my God, is that all? Yes, that's all. <laughs> because my industry, not yeah. to bag them out or anything, but, you know, they're um, predominantly men in Australia probably 25% women in financial oh, wow. planning, mm-hmm. very low. Um, and, you know, they kind of um, use the, the jargon and the lingo and um, and overcomplicate things. It's not that complicated. <laughs> it's not. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I do. It's, it's not that this is similar, but it's slightly the same mindset as, you know, I do a lot of home renovations at my house and, you know, everybody's like, how did you learn? How did you learn? I'm like, listen, if I can see some, somebody else coming in my house to do it. And I think to myself, I'm as smart as they are. I can figure that out. And so I teach myself. It's really not as hard as everyone makes it seem, right? Like things are not as difficult. Yep. It's it's the it's the lack of desire to try is the problem. You know, it's not it's not the difficulty of it necessarily. It's it's the the mystique of it. <laughs> I would say in that yeah. people are afraid of it. Fear of the unknown, isn't it? Yes. And, and probably, and this is where the financial confidence piece came in because I found that once they became financially confident, they were able to overcome all of these other um, barriers of having a go at investing in property or, or making those sorts of decisions when they mm. were able to tap into their own money story because yeah. that's where you got to start. you got to start sure. there. Absolutely. you got to unveil all of that stuff. And then move into your current mindset and, and and understand yourself, particularly as a woman, be congruent with your values, understand yeah. what's important to you and where you want to go with that and letting go of the past, recognizing it and saying, you know what, that doesn't define me anymore because that was yeah. when I was a kid at home, but this is my adult self now and I'm prepared to forgive you and let you go. And I'm going to make decisions based on what's important to me. And I can't do that without working out my values. And then I'm going to start on my financial journey. But just skills like learning learning financial stuff by itself doesn't change behavior. It doesn't actually change anything. There's lots of programs that, oh, let me teach you this. That's all fine. But that's not the answer. The answer yeah. is going back in order to go forward, which yeah. I had to do. Yeah. And that changed my behavior. And let me tell you, um, that Tracy still exists. She will yeah. never go away because that's that's my financial blueprint, I call it. Yeah. I just know how to control her better. I, I have I have um 
I have built processes to stop me. Uh I have made sure I pay myself first. So my future self is taken care of. I, I've, I'm managing the process better. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm not 100% cured. I'm not sitting here going, look at me, I'm fantastic. No. Nah. Like I still think, oh, what can I spend that on? Like that's my first <laughs> thing, right? It's like, like I said, with my hubby and I, we're totally different. If we come into a win for gain, say there's 1000 bucks or whatever, he thinks his first instinct is, what loan can I pay that off or what can I what investment can I put that to? My first instinct is, oh, what can I spend that on? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's still my instinct. I'm not going to sit here and lie about it, but yeah. I know that that's not, I go, tries. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Maybe have a little bit of it and then yeah. put the rest away. Yeah. Like you got yeah. to give to yourself. You, you can't do. be that cruel. You, you got to give a bit. That's all good. Mm-hmm. But, but balance that out. Balance, yeah. Whereas previously the whole thing would have gone. Yeah. <laughs> like that. So, so one question, I know we're getting kind of close to the end of our talk, but I'm really appreciative of all that you've said to us and all the great advice. What do you wish more people knew? I wish more people knew. <clears throat> this is a great question. There's a couple of things, but I'm trying to pick the best one. I wish more people knew the actual power of compound. Ooh. We know it but we don't know it. We don't actually know it in the way that I share with my clients and in my programs. Power of compound requires time. Time is the key element here. And the power of compound, if you start early enough, and going back to the uni students, if they're in their early 20s, what age would they be when they graduate? About 22, 23 Oh, my God, if they just put away and, you know, one of the things I do is save your age. So if you're 22, you add two zeros and you save 2,200 and then 2,300 and then 2,400, right, every single year. If they start early enough and put a small amount away and that compounds over time and you can see that compound because compound is something that needs time. Like the first, I think, statistically, they say seven years, you really can't see much. And that's where people get um, impatient. They go, this isn't working. Oh, bugger it. I'm out of here. But that's when it's about to start. It's the snowball. Mm -hmm. You know, the little Mm -hmm. snowflake that turns into a snowball that turns into an avalanche. That's compound. And so I show my clients um, this example of um, three kids. I think they started, I call them kids because I'm older. They they start at 20 and they all start with $100. One starts 10 years earlier than the other two and stops after 10 years. The second one starts with the same amount of money 10 years later and will never, ever catch up to the previous one, even if they throw twice the money at it. That's the power of compound. Don't underestimate it. Just be patient and just start with something, mm. something, and just exponentially increase that over. If if they made it compulsory for um, young kids who have just entered the workforce to do that, they will have millions of dollars in, you know, and I know for them it's hard to imagine being 40 or 50, God forbid. <laughs> but it, yeah, it happens to all of us. By the time they get to that age, they're going to have so much money. And this is going to be outside of their 401k, by the way. Wow. Because that's yeah. going to happen anyway. This is just another little piece on the side. It's powerful, but it's not taught in a way that we understand the power of it. Um, mm. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Great, great advice. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Tracy Sofra. I really enjoyed talking with you. Um, so for our audience, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. It's been a pleasure. It, it's been an absolute pleasure for me too, Angela. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So please check Tracy out. Um, she'll be, uh, all of her links will be on uh, prettypowerfulpodcast.com. We would love for you to come and check out her advice and, and go to her website and um, learn a little bit more about her. So thank you again, Tracy. Everybody have an amazing day. Thank you for joining our guests on the Pretty Powerful Podcast. And we hope you've gained new insight and learned from exceptional women. Remember to subscribe or check out this and all episodes on prettypowerfulpodcast.com. Visit us next time. And until then, step into your own power.